so so far we looked into the kolmogorov zirnov test which we argued that uh, it's a distribution free test because the test distribution of the test statistics does not depend on the underlying underlying uh, distribution of the null hypothesis so let's let's recap this what we said okay let's look into the two things for first thing which looked into chi square test where we said that we are going to look into the statistics which is given by equals to 1 to n f i minus e i square divided by e i where e i is the uh, expected sorry the frequency of the null hypothesis and f i is where the observed frequency from data. So in computing this all we needed is f i s okay and this required us to specify the complete distribution so that we can compute ei and in case we don't know that we estimated this by first estimating the parameter and then of the distributions and from the distributions we computed the frequencies of the classes and there the good thing we are able to show that this q approximately follow chi square distribution In particular, when we said that when the distribution is completely specified, we said that and we have to we have k classes, this q was exactly chi square distribution with k minus 2 degrees of freedom. Now in ks test, and again there were two things here. Here we said that this is for discrete case. In the KS test, our maybe we could have put substituted n, sub, put subscripted n also here because this is based on um, not uh, n samples or maybe k just to indicate that there are k classes. And uh, so here it was k, not exactly n, because we were only making k comparisons, one corresponding to each class. In the in the KS test, we have this. And uh, and here, okay, k q was chi square distribution distributed and uh, independent of the underlying. So okay, maybe independent instead of uh, irrespective of of our null hypothesis distribution f not x. And here we also said that this dn, in the case of chi square test, our statistics we could explicitly establish that it is chi square distribution. In dn, all we could argue is that it is its distribution does not depend on. So we did not explicitly obtained the distribution of dn, all we said is one can compute them and they are available in the form where dn alpha values will be specified from which we can obtain the alpha uh, critical points of these distributions. And again here it was for continuous distribution. So notice that the KS test required us to specify completely the distribution that we are going to test. 
and in case we do not know all the parameter of this distribution, but only the shape is specified, one has to estimate those parameters and then use them in this distribution f naught x. However, once you estimate that and plug in your uh, and use it for your hypothesis uh, distribution, then the cal computation of the distribution of dn becomes complicated because of that it is not uh, easy to establish the tables for it. And in fact, it so happens that if you pretend that whenever there is no parameter specified of your distribution, but if you even if you plug in the estimated one and pretend that that is the actual that is the true value and continue to use your dn tables, the values you are going to obtain can be very conservative and because of that you may end up making more errors in accepting or re rejecting your uh, uh, distributions. To somewhat overcome this issue, we have another test called as let me make sure that I can uh, write the spelling correctly. We will be looking into Lily force test. For short, I am going to just call it as L test to check my hypothesis whenever my underlying hypothesis that I need to test is Gaussian. Here, all I am specified is the distrib I need my null hypothesis is just Gaussian distribution and uh, we have not been told what is the mean and variance. Okay, so then I need to check whether my data samples I have they follow Gaussian shape. How to go about this? So now that is where Lily force contributions come into picture. So now, the suggested modification here is, here we have dn in the, in the KS statistics we have So here, it worked on all points x. One possibility is we can instead of this, we can use an another form of this, which is I am going to denote as of n, and this is now taken to be standard normal distribution okay that we have earlier denoted as v of z now before i use it we are going to do some transformation on my data instead of looking into all the excess that I have, we will be looking into the transformed one and how I am going to transform is like this. And here x bar is simply the mean, empirical mean of the samples I have observed and s square is my standard empirical Uh, variance and uh, this is like uh, i equals to 1 to n xi minus x bar whole square. 
So notice that I'm as we did earlier, I'm using the denominator n minus 1. So to ensure that my variance estimator is normalized and uh, here s is I'm going and I'm going to take its square root to get my empirical standard deviation. So now we know that roughly z we have basically centralized and normalized. So this is roughly going to behave like a normal distribution with 0 1 and now I am going to compare this with uh, basically the standard normal distribution. Okay. So now everything remains the same and uh, again the distribution of this can be computed not in explicitly form but maybe uh, through some empirical evaluations. But the good thing is that this uh, even in this case after doing all this transformation and comparing with the standard normal distribution, I am, it is still distribution free because I do not need to worry about what is the underlying distribution in computing or evaluating the distribution of dn. So I think uh, uh, Lily Force did extensive computation of the tables for this dn and again the dn alpha tables are available after doing this transformation and then again we can do our uh, test using the similar criteria we have earlier. So when I want to compute calculate uh, or like I want to check whether my distribution uh, of the data follows a Gaussian distribution we do this transformation and then you compute the statistic and uh, for this statistic we already have the tables that gives me the critical uh, the thresholds for various significance values then whatever day n value I have I am going to compare it whether this holds or not. If this holds then reject this to be following a Gaussian distribution uh, and then if it is less than this value then accept it. Well, just let me check whether uh, did we say greater than or equal to equal to was include or it was a strictly great. Yeah, I think uh, we made strictly great uh, for rejection and uh, and accept with less than or equals to. Okay, fine. So this is the summary of Lily force test and uh, the example is one can follow the same steps as we did here the only thing that needs to be done is we have to use this transformation before we applying that and uh, use this standard normal distribution in the definition of dn and again use the dn alpha value which are computed for this specific statistics. So simply when you are uh, using when after you do this transformation and you when you use this standard normal distribution here just uh, do not use the tables that you used here to when you try to apply the KS statistics. So use the uh, separate tables that are available for this uh, Lily force uh, test and uh, based on whether it is larger or not you can accept or reject your uh, hypothesis that your distribution follows uh, Gaussian distribution or not. Okay, fine. Now this is all we computed. We did we studied several methods about uh, whether uh, whether my data follow certain distributions and uh, if uh, the distributions are kind of fixed we are only not sure about the parameters then we also studied various hypothesis test for that. So we studied various parametrics and non-parametrics method but often before we get into this parametrics and non-parametrics method one can do simple visualization of the data itself and see that whether the data is following my hypothesis distribution. So for that there are various methods 
I am going to quickly discuss two of them. So this is something called exploratory data analysis. So let's say you have been given two distributions, CDFs, G and C, and you want to check whether how close or how similar or how dissimilar they are. To do this, we are going to look into two possible or yeah, we are going to study two things. One is called probability probability plots or so often called plot and another is called quartile quartile plots. Sorry, quantile quantile plots. Called QQ plots. So this is what we what we are trying to do is explore the data analysis for goodness of fit here. So let's try to look into what is this probability probability plot. So let's say you have this x. For every possible value of x, you can take f of x here. So the f of x range was going to be, we know that f of x range is going to be between 0 1 and so is g of x so on the x axis you are going to take all possible values of f of x and on the y axis you are going to look into all possible values Rep y axis represent all possible values. So let's say this is 0, 1. So this is, so this is like you are looking into this box here. Because I don't need to go anywhere beyond. Sorry, this is 1 and 1 and this is 0. So let's draw one line with slope. 45, I would say from this uh, figure you can see that this is not exactly a square shape, it is looking more little rectangular, but assume this is just like a square here. So I have drawn a diagonal which has a slope of 45 degrees. Now you can plot g of x versus f of x and maybe I don't know like uh, for all possible values of x you may get something like this and uh, for for a given set of uh, so if you are a g and uh, g and f are completely specified to you maybe you will get like some continuous line or all possible vex may get or you may get like something like this oh sorry i made a mistake uh, this is like a cdf or oh, whatever like uh, it can go up down whatever and then or you may get something like this so now clearly if your line is your plot of f versus g lies very close to your 45 degree line then you can claim that your data is following up you can say that these two distributions are similar right and if it is uh, too much off from your 45 degrees then it kinds of gives an indication that maybe the these two distributions are different maybe you need to explore this data more or uh, at least uh, do further systematic analysis uh, to actually say that okay the, you can declare that these are very different Similarly, instead of going for PP plot, one can also do QQ plot. So what is QQ plot doing? Instead of simply plotting F 
and G we are can plot F inverse of P and the G inverse of P and here P has to be between 0 and 1 right. And notice that now the range of f inverse p and g inverse can be like entire real line, right? Now again we can do the same thing is here. So for all possible of p values where p is between 0 1 you get the values for particular let us say this is a particular for a particular p let us take a particular p and uh, this is one value corresponding to that then I will get like this is corresponding to let us say this is like f inverse p and like uh, this is like a g inverse p I will get this one value for a particular value and uh, like that you do it for all possible values of p ranging between 0 and 1. So, for every possible value of p you will going to get a different lines and uh, you see that if f inverse is same as g inverse, you are again going to get a 45 degrees line which is going to pass through. Okay? And, uh, if they are not, then you are not going to get a line which is going to be close or overlapping with this 45 degrees and based on that you can, based on whether your line is going to be closer or how far from your 45 degrees line, you will get a sense of whether your data is going to follow the given distribution or like in this case you will get a sense of whether these two distributions are same or not. Using this, we can now think of comparing what we have. I have this SNX which is computing from my data and F0X which is from my null hypothesis can compute. Okay. Often in this case, instead of the PP plot, QQ plot become easier to plot because of the properties of SNX. So, what we know SNI first of all takes value discrete values right like 1 by n, uh, 0, 1 by n, 2 by n like this. So, because of this, I need to when, when I have to look into the QQ plot, I have to look into Sn inverse and F inverse right. I only need to calculate this Sn inverse at this discrete point. That is, I need to calculate S n inverse uh, at um, uh, like at x, where x is this quantity so 0, 1 by n, 2 by n, n. And moreover, once I have this given data x1, x2, xn, and I have this ordered them and I have this order statistics. I know that S n inverse at let us say some i by n is exactly equals to x of n. You know this right already. This is the property of your uh, uh, empirical distributions. So, because of this let us say you are plotting your QQ plot, your x axis let us say if you are going to plot, you, you are going to make x axis corresponding to your empirical distributions. So, these points are going to be simply x of 1, 
x of 2 like this. Maybe this is, let me say i like this. Okay. And uh, so this is like corresponding to um, 1 by n and now on the so now whatever this corresponds to now on this this has this this point corresponds to where your f of 0 is let us say 1 by n and here this one corresponds to yeah maybe let us say if this corresponds to you will have this point to be let us say f of 0 by 2 so like this. So all you need to do is on your y axis you have the points f 1 by n and f 0 2 by n and uh, the corresponding points on your x axis is going to be x of 1 x of 2 and now you need to see you have these points and uh, let us say this is uh, corresponding to f 0 of i by n let us say this is this you need to take the point through them and see how close it is to your 45 degree line okay so this gives you uh, when you are looking into the qq plot against your empirical distribution when you are comparing qq plot of your empirical distribution with that of the null hypothesis you are kind of x axis you know which points you have to look into on the y axis you know which points you have to look into so you know what is your curve and all you need to do is check whether that curve has a 45 degrees slope if it has a 45 degree slope then are very close to that it's a good indication that this must this uh, uh, your data is following null hypothesis distribution otherwise you need to do some more confirmatory tests like what you have done before okay um, okay one small issue with this is like we know that when we have this x of n here right so x of n this will correspond to the point f of n by n right so this should be this should be inverse 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 here right now this will correspond to when you have x of n here this will correspond to f inverse n of n and we know that f inverse of 1 is infinity. So, because of this at uh, this at as n is when we are exhausting all the n points uh, when you are reaching my last point of my order statistics my f inverse is tending infinity. So, often to overcome this issue the packages will do slightly different things. So, what we have here is actually, so what we have is when we are going to plot this, what we are basically doing is f inverse of i by n and x of i. And we are plotting them like this is for, uh, we are plotting them i equals to 0, 1, 2, up to n, right? And uh, here when i becomes n, this point is at infinity, the y axis is infinity. So most of the packages to overcome this issue, they will look into the slightly modified version of this. I am directly taking it from this like mm, this maybe they will do some small alteration to this by taking i minus 0 0.375 divided by n plus 0 0.25 and then do this. So when i is 
we coming n you need to do some corrections so that you are not hitting infinity on your y axis so one of the um, some i'm just mentioning uh, that there could one of the possible correction is to do this so that uh, you can still observe some value on the y axis and this is just one of the examples you may do various uh, different combinations so that you can show something still on in your plot okay so often even though we discuss this exploited data analysis at the end maybe this is the first thing you want to do you want to just uh, draw your qq plots pp plots and see how close they are how close they are compared to the 45 degrees lines and if they are pretty close you get a good confidence that okay your data is as per your null hypothesis otherwise maybe data is not enough so you need to do some more test and that's where you can revisit all the hypothesis testing we did or uh, when uh, your uh, distributions are parameterized and uh, or uh, uh, you want to use a full knowledge of the distribution or you can use non-parametric non methods uh, when you don't want to use the knowledge of your distributions to make this test okay so with this uh, we will conclude this thank you very much